Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor and it's time for more Scuttlebutt. This week's game is brought to you by Tier 10 Premium American Battleship USS Ohio. This is one of two announced ships available via the new Research Bureau system that I've kind of teased and previewed elsewhere on the channel. I'll, I'll drop a card in here so you can go check that video out if you're not familiar with it. Um, the other ship coming in that system, as a part of that system that's been announced so far, is Tier 10 Premium French Cruiser Colbert. I've only shown one Ohio game here on the channel before, but this, this seemed like a decent look at the ship, so I wanted to give it a go. Um, I'm playing this game on Zoop's stream uh, on Thursday night, so I'm divved up with him and Night Rod Greg here on Northern Lights. To me, this highlights one of the things that you're going to hear a lot of people talk about with Ohio. It's a very easy comparison to make to, to compare her to Montana, but she's not Montana. Um... I spend a lot of time in the early game frustrated, looking for shots, not really getting them, getting weird angles and not great salvos and so on, and then things start to pick up towards the end of the game. So stay tuned. It does get more exciting, even though it's 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 definitely quite boring for a while. So what has been going on in Shooty Boats? Well, our forum contest of the week this week, we always like to talk about that, uh, is to earn exactly eight ribbons in a game, eight different ribbons... Uh, you know, eight different types to, to earn five victorious camouflages and a chance at one of the three unique Ovechkin captains that have recently been put back in the premium shop for sale. Now, I'm not going to recommend you spend money on a ship captain because I think that something that you're spending money like that on something that you can eventually invest the time in and earn for free in the game is yeah, maybe not the best way to go. But some of these captains have some unique perks that are fun. So if you want to invest money in one, you know, hey, it's your money. You spend it however you want. But um, but the Wargaming is offering you the chance to, to win one for free here, so definitely take advantage. It's not that hard to go play a game and, and just pick up eight ribbon types, right? Um, I have to give another another big round of thanks and a shout out to Nozoop for you for his efforts to help help me get a little more uh, notice around here, myself and other CCs. Uh, he posted a video last week uh, highlighting myself, Lord Zath, Oni the Wicked. Um, uh, I forget the other two, damn it. <laughs> I'm terrible and I should have gone back and looked at it. But he highlighted a bunch of CCs. I'll put the link down to the, the video below. He highlighted a bunch of CCs and uh, I just, I can't thank him enough for putting me on that list. I've definitely, there's been a big uptick in subscribers and interest in the channel. Even got some new commenters coming in, so that's really nice. But on top of that, he invited myself and Lord Zath to join him on a stream this past Thursday evening where we recorded this game uh, for the exact same reasons. He's had a huge impact on how quickly I've been able to add subscribers over the last month, and I just cannot put into words how much I appreciate the help. So it's up to me now to just keep doing what I'm doing, and, uh, and hopefully you guys find it interesting and, and continue to spread the word. Um, and, um, you know, if there's something, if you're new to the channel, right, you know, if there's something that, that you think I, I should be doing that I'm not doing, hey, look, I'm a pretty open guy. Leave me a comment, tag me on Twitter, like, tag me in Discord if you happen to share Discord with me, right? Like, I... We create content partly because it's something that we enjoy doing. You know, maybe there's a, a specific message I want to get out or, or, or game I want to showcase, right? But if there's something that you guys specifically want to see, um, you know, I, I can't promise that I'll get it done, but you gain, you, you know, ask, right? Like, you gain nothing by not saying anything. Um, so at least come talk to me and we'll, we'll have a conversation and, and, and we can chat about whatever your idea is and see, see what we can do. Um, I gotta give more shoutouts for Anchors Away. The next two Anchors Away events are coming up very quickly. In just a couple of weeks, Wargaming NA community staff will be at HMCS Haida in Hamilton, Ontario on Friday and Saturday, 30 and 31 August. The very next day, Sunday 1 September, they will be aboard USS Little Rock just across the Niagara River in Buffalo, New York. Uh, the Little Rock event, uh, last I heard, Volgar the Viking, uh, fellow CC, was going to be there. So if you live in that part of the world, you're going out to that event, definitely go say hi to Volgar. Meet him, shake his hand. He's great people, fantastic to talk to, um, and uh, and definitely I encourage you to any chance you get to go to one of these events and meet players, absolutely go. I'm pretty sure the Saturday Haida session is sold out. There might be a couple of tickets left. I don't think so, though. But tickets definitely remain for both Friday and Sunday, last I checked. Um, so you just take advantage of this if you've got the time. Um, Fight for the Flagship has uh, kicked off here on NA. Um, day one was this past weekend, and uh, it uh, did not <laughs> did not go as planned. Um, we had a really good number of teams signed up to play. We should have had, I think it was 19, 18 or 19 teams uh, show up to play on Saturday. 
But unfortunately, we had a ridiculous number of just flat out no shows. And even some of the people that some of the teams that did show up to play were only able to field a partial team. You know, you're supposed to be eight v eight, and they could only round up seven players or something. Um, as disheartening as it is to try and organize an event that seemingly you know, looks on paper like we should have a good turnout and then just magically doesn't, I kind of get it. I mean, I'm not happy, but I kind of get it. There's a lot going on right now. Wargaming has stacked ranked battles on top of clan battles on top of this French event. You know, we ask people to come play in the middle of a Sunday, a Saturday afternoon. It's summer. So I get that not everyone could. And we did have a few teams, you know, cancel a few days out. Like, give us enough advance notice that we could go ahead and make roster changes and adjust our expectations. But it was incredibly frustrating, though, to have teams who signed up, filled out their roster, read the rules, joined the Discord, did everything that we asked them to do, and then simply just, like, never speak to us again and, and of course, fail to show up on tournament day. I think... My impression, what I'm taking away out of this, is this. We've reached a point where player-run events simply are not going to be a thing in World of Warships. At least not outside of the ones that we already try to do that have a good following, which is primarily King of the Sea and Shipstorm. Trying to organize a brand new, never-before player-run event in a world where we have zero visibility of Wargaming's long-term event schedule is absolutely lose-lose for us. Which is a shame, because the WGNA guys here have been amazing and super supportive during this event, right? They're constantly reaching out to us. What can we do? What can we help with? Kami and Fem and everybody in the Austin office has been just top-notch, as they always are when we come to them with a request to put on an event and, and you know, kind of hold our hands out and say, what can you help us with for prizes? They're always awesome about, about helping out. Before I get too down, like, talking about day one, I do want to remind everybody, though, that day two is pressing forward, right? We've, we, we invited 12 teams. We had 11 teams accept. We managed to qualify five teams, despite the, the issues we had with day one. So we absolutely have a full bracket for this Saturday afternoon's main event, starting at 2 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. I really hope you guys will come and, and hang out and join us. Uh, I'm headed up to Austin on Friday evening, Friday during the day. Kami and I are going to... Uh, cast uh, on the main Warships channel. We're going to track our, you know, there's a lot of games going on, right? So we're going to show what we're going to show, and then there'll be other streams showcasing as many of these games as we can. We definitely have a slate of casters lined up to help us showcase as much of the action as we can. So come on by, have fun, hang out, watch ships explode, and uh, and cheer on your favorite teams if you have a, have a favorite. We'd, uh, we'd love to have you. What else is going on? PTS! Now, this is a bit of a surprise. We're getting a somewhat rare third round of public testing this weekend. To my knowledge, this has only ever happened before with 0 0.8, the big 0 0.8.0 patch back in January when we rolled out pretty much the entire new carrier system. So, what does that mean? Well, it tells us a couple of things. First, it tells us that the next patch, which I had expected to drop next Wednesday, the 21st of August, will in fact not be here until Wednesday, the 28th of August at the earliest. Essentially, um, Wargaming has... Uh, they they now run a thing where they do not run a week into public test and then try to patch the following week. There's always uh, a complete week of Q, internal Q&A in between the closing of the last public test session and the rollout of the patch. So you won't see a patch this week, this coming week. You're going to see it on the 28th at the earliest. Okay. It also tells us, uh, in my opinion, that due to some of the bugs in how Priority Sector was working in the first weekend of 0.8.7 PTS, that they weren't happy with the data they got or that they didn't get and has extended things a little bit to try and fine tune. Now, this is an assumption on my part. It's possible there was always in the plan for them to, to, to plan, run three weeks of public testing, but it is definitely not the norm. Um, there's a lot going on in this patch with regards to A values as well as the priority sector changes. So if you have some time this weekend, I would ask very politely that you please go invest a few games into the public test server and try things out. Remember, you get rewards on your main account for spending time playing on public tests. So if you're a free-to-play player who doesn't want to spend money on the live server, this is a great way to pick up some flags or some premium times or some great, some of those those super juicy econ flags. Um, you know, just go check it out. Spend spend a couple hours derping around, you know, shooting down planes, getting shot at by planes, and help them gather some data, and, and let's see what we can do with this system. Um, dead blog post. Only a few of these during the week, uh, just today, uh, Thursday, as I record this on the uh, the European the weekly European community stream. 
Wargaming announced two new premium ships. That's Tier 7 American Battleship USS California and Tier 10 French Destroyer Marceau. Now, California is one of two Tennessee-class battleships that the Navy built and carries the same battery, the main battery armament as uh, New Mexico does at Tier 6, 12 of these 14-inch barrels in four triple turrets. This Tier 7 edition of California is her post-refit version. In other words, California was a casualty at Pearl Harbor. She was sunk, refloated, repaired, upgraded, and then sent back into the war, where she participated both in surface actions at Leyte Gulf, as well as numerous shore bombardment campaigns uh, throughout the various island hopping in the Pacific. Marceau seems to be a version of Tier 10 French destroyer Kleber that trades her 139mm main battery turrets for the, the 127mm ones that are identical to those found on cruiser Colbert. Now, because of the reload speed on these 127mm guns, she does not have main battery reload booster. Um, however, instead she comes equipped with defensive AA fire. So, okay, it's a little bit of a change there. A French destroyer with decent AA. That's, that's a change. Um, next up, there was a quick announcement about, uh, detailing the rounds of rank sprint that are coming in 0.8.8. .8. Now that's, we're talking like late September before that patch gets here. So you got a ways, um, as well as some improvements to a couple of maps and sounds, uh, lighting on certain maps, uh, some game sounds are getting improvements and the announcement of new camouflages for Bismarck, Cossack and Art Royal. And last but not least is the big announcement that everybody's talking about, the official announcement of something that folks have been speculating for a long time. That's right, submarines are coming to World of Warships. Now, there's no timeline for this. We have no, we aren't told, we have no visibility on when they will even begin testing this. Though, presumably, if they're making public announcements at this point, that they have at least an internal build capable of messing around with the mechanics as, the, as they're in progress. They do, however, note that they have a more extensive testing cycle planned for subs than we saw for the carrier rework. This is one of the big lessons learned that they spelled out for us during the CV rework panel in St. Petersburg. There was an entire slide talking about how most of the testing done for 0.8.0 was focused on stability and not balance. So they're seeking to fix this, this error, this mistake that they made by getting the stability right, testing on a separate server for a while, presumably closed testing. Maybe they'll invite the super testers. There'll be some kind of separate build for this, I think, to get the balance right. Then um, they'll start bringing it onto public test and then eventually onto live. Now, as anyone who's played on PTS will tell you, there's zero chance of them getting enough data on, on the over there just to balance entirely new classes and mechanics. Um, so what they're going to do is they're going to bring it to the live client eventually as a separate game mode, and then players will be able to try it out, uh, learn the new systems, learn the new mechanics, while helping Wargaming gather enough data to ensure things that are reasonably balanced before it actually gets rolled out into the game for good. Now, I haven't heard it. We don't know what their long-term plans are for this. Are they going to come to random battles? I mean, in, honestly, guys, that has to happen. There's got to be a way. Um... Will there be hard caps on the number of subs in a game? I don't know. How will this interact with the destroyers? I don't know. There's there's a trillion questions here that we're going to have to get answered along the way. But the short version is, this is happening, and, uh, well, buckle up and enjoy the ride. I think another thing that's benefiting all of this, though, and I mentioned this before, is that there's no timeline. To me, this is a good thing. The CV rework was discussed for so long in the community, it was really a meme. Uh, a long-running joke that players used to, to kind of, you know, needle wargaming about how messed up the class was. And I think they were in a in a conscious rush to get it out there and start addressing the problems that the RTS carrier system had. From my chair, right now where I sit today, there's absolutely no reason for them to be in a big rush with, with subs. They have no timeline for this aside from what they set for themselves. If they can get carriers to work, the game will be in a, you know, get the A balance kind of where we want it in a better place. The game will actually be in a pretty good place. And so if we're gonna if we're gonna throw a monkey wrench into that, let's take our time, let's do it right. Uh, there's no reason to be in a rush. And the nice thing is, is that the way they intend to do this, from what I'm reading, they plan for to uh, invite players in, and we'll be a part of that process along the way to help sure they get it right. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for news. Of course, this game here in the background is winding down. I, you know, this is a loss. <laughs> um, I had a spectacular run here at the end. I got, I got irritated by this Kremlin and this Musashi, and no one would do anything about it. So I turned around and pushed, and I really wanted to kill the Kremlin, and never quite got there. But instead, the Musashi offered himself up to me, and well, we got some good licks in on him before we uh, went, went off the board. But um, this was, uh, this was lost, unfortunately, before I made that turn. 
Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Again, if you're new to the channel, thank you for tuning in. Uh, even if you're old to the channel, thanks for all your support and tuning in week after week. It is noticed. It is appreciated, guys. Um, as we get closer to the end of August, uh, things are going to be... I've got a lot going on. The last week of August, I'll be at DragonCon in Atlanta, so you'll, you'll see probably light videos that week. I do have two streams for next week. Uh, next Tuesday is my regular stream, and next Friday, the 23rd, I believe it is, will be my uh, my regular Fletcher Friday for August. So come by, come by and, uh, and plan on that, and we'll have some fun blowing up boats. Destroyer-wise, that's right, Fletcher. It absolutely has to, absolutely positively has to be sunk. You call a Fletcher. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Take care, be safe out there, and I'll see you around the channel.